how was the first day of school? Fine, I guess. Did you guys pick up on that? Sure oh, did. Well, something's wrong. Signal the husband. <laughs> What did she say? Oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What is it, woman? What? I'm joy. This is sadness. That's anger. This is disgust. And that's fear. We're emotions. <laughs> Congratulations, San Francisco! You're on pizza! Well, good morning, one church. How's everybody doing on this glorious Sunday morning? If you happen to be here, somebody say amen. So glad you came to church uh, today. Hey, real quick, as far as the announcements go, I just got one thing. I want to remind everybody that next week, next week uh, on Sunday morning, we have praise giving. Uh, this is going to be a, a uh, awesome time of worship uh, together, but we're also uh, we're also going to be doing baptisms. And so if you've made a, a decision to give uh, uh, your life to Jesus and for Jesus to be the Lord of your life and you're ready to, to put a ring on it and follow through with uh, believers' baptism, uh, then, then uh, you still have time. You can just fill out a connection card, go out and, 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 and meet with somebody at our connections table, give it to them at the end of service today, and somebody from our baptism team uh, will call you this next week and get you hooked up um, with that. Um, also, we have baby dedications, and so if you uh, if you have a baby kid and, and you are ready to, uh, uh, you want to dedicate them to just raising them uh, in community and, and to, to uh, love Jesus and to make him known, uh, we would love just to get an opportunity to pray for you um, and your kiddo. Uh, it's not baptism. We don't baptize babies. Okay, so uh, they won't be getting in the tank. We'll just stay right here and, and pray. Uh, but you have an opportunity to do that as well um, if you'd like. All you got to do for both of those actually is to go on our church website. Uh, scroll down right there on our main page and you'll see the praise giving uh, flyer. And, and there will be two tabs underneath. One that says baptism. One that says baby dedication. Fill those out and we'll be in contact with you. Uh, about next week. And so uh, one other thing, if you signed up to be a part of Plugged In, you're ready to become a fully licensed One Churcher. Uh, that is today after our second service. And so, uh, you know, go go uh, do something after service or serve, you know, whatever. Or double dip, you know, why not? Why not? I mean, uh, you can do that as well, but after, there you go, Lester. But after uh, after second service today, come back and, and, and would love to have you be a part of Plugged In if you signed up for that. Um, it's going to be awesome. And so that's it as far as announcements. Um, uh, we are in week number four, our last week really of the series since we're doing Praise Giving uh, and next week. And then we'll start our, our, Christmas, uh, um, our Christmas series. Uh, but this is week number four uh, of a series called Inside Out. And, and last week, last week, we talked about joy, okay, which, which is a fun topic. Um, to talk about. We talked about joy. We talked about what is joy. We talked about how to get it, and we talked about how to actually activate it um, in our lives. Uh, today, we're going to kind of go the opposite end of the spectrum with something that's not near as fun, um, and that is the topic of sadness. We're going to talk about uh, the topic of sadness, um, and despite how you know, cute the character um, is right here in Inside Out. We know there's nothing cute um, about a sadness. Uh, this past week, Brandy and I uh, decided uh, that we wanted to take a day off. And so we took a day off um, from work uh, on Monday. And, and uh, our, our idea was we were going to go out on a date. Y'all, we were going to go just get away and spend some quality time together um, on a date because we haven't got to do that in a minute. And so, um, so we did that. Well... <clears throat> There's somebody in our church, and I'm not going to name her, um, but let's just say she decorated um, her living room, decked out with Christmas stuff early. Okay, I'm not saying anybody's name. She shall remain nameless. She's on the second row right there. Um, but but uh, she decorated her house, and, and here's the problem. Her house looks awesome um, and, and Christmas stuff, and so, so then my wife got this idea of we should go to Hobby Lobby. And, and, and so I, I know, I know, I shared this, but but so we so we go to Hobby Lobby, and so um, and of course, I, like Hobby Lobby didn't get the memo that you're not supposed to decorate for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. They didn't have that memo, and so we're walking around Hobby Lobby, and, and I'm gonna be honest, like like after being in Hobby Lobby for a minute, both Brandy and I um, started to kind of get the Christmas itch, right? We started to kind of like get into the Christmas spirit a little bit, but because. 
we are God-fearing Christians who, who we desire to raise our children in a God-honoring fashion. We, we realize that it is still too early um, to put up Christmas decorations. So, so as a compromise, uh, we decided to go ahead and put up um, the rest of our Govee um, lights. If you're not familiar uh, with Gobi lights, you can leave them up year round and then program them to do whatever. Um, and so, so our compromise, our compromise was we put up our Gobi lights, um, uh, and, and and our Gobi lights they can display whatever whatever we want. So, so the lights on my house right now, don't get it twisted, they are not Christmas lights. And I have, I have a video proof um, to, to, to prove this. In fact, they are back-to-back -back world champion um, football lights uh, right now on my house. That's what they are. Uh, I'm right there. I'm sorry, Cowboys. Uh, but uh, so, so, okay, so <laughs> we'll talk later. So on, the, uh, no. so on Monday, here's what happened. So on Monday, we woke up and... and uh, um, and, and, and I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but the Amazon fairy had come to my house yet again, right? And so uh, 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 we, we got the lights that we ordered uh, specifically for, for our shrubs, and, and so we wanted to put them on the shrubs. And so we're thinking, okay, this will take five minutes. We walk out and look at the shrubs and realize um, our shrubs were so overgrown that there was no way that the lights were going to fit on them. So we're like, okay, this just takes just a little bit. And so we, we get the, the, the trimmers and, and all the things out, and, 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 and let's just say one thing um, led to another, and, and three hours later, um, three hours later, as we're putting the stuff um, back into our garage, we realized how ridiculously cluttered um, our garage was. In fact, y'all, I'm just going to be honest. Like, it's not just, like, cluttered. Like, we moved into our house four and a half years ago. Barry knows. He remembers. Uh, four and a half years ago, um, and we hadn't touched half this stuff since we, uh, since we moved uh, and got it out of the U-Haul. So, so we're making the very, um, we're making the very uh, difficult decision um, on what stuff to keep and what stuff to uh, throw away. And, and if you ever want to test the strength of a marriage relationship, then, then engage in, in one of these. I mean, y'all, we, we probably needed counseling um, at, the, at the end of this uh, uh, with this, but as we're throwing stuff away, so, uh, but as we're throwing stuff away, I came across, I came across a box, and I came across a box, and this is not the actual box, but I just wanted to, I mean, it was, trust me, it was much bigger and much heavier um, with this, but we, we came across, so uh, came across a box, and have you ever, have you ever, like, had that feeling where, where, where you, in your back, where, where you go and, 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 and to lift something or pick something up, and, and you think it weighs five pounds? And so you're prepped for five pounds, but in reality, it weighs about 50 pounds? You know what I'm talking about? And, and so, 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 so I, I pick up this box and realize this ain't a five-pound box. This is a heavy box. And, and then suddenly I have a flashback. Like, I have a flashback, um, and I remember this is exactly what happened the last time The last time I picked up this box, like, four and a half years ago. That, that, that in fact, I remember it. I remember it because it was a source of, let's just say, intense fellowship um, between Brandy and I um, as I was packing this box. And she, and she said, you know, Will, you really shouldn't pack all those books in that box. Like I said, it's a much bigger box, guys. I just, just want to just oh, much bigger, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm thinking this. Listen, but I'm a man. Right? I'm, I'm telling me. I'm a man. Right? Like, like in fact, in fact I, I, I am what I consider to be, and some of y'all are going to relate to this. I am a one-trip warrior. Meaning, meaning, meaning. Every time I go to Walmart, right? Every time I go to Walmart, my, my, man, my manhood is challenged when we get home as I attempt the feat of carrying all of the groceries in on one trip. Where are my one trip warriors in the house right now that know exactly what I'm talking about? Glory to God, right? I, 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 I strap the, like, all these thread bags all over my arm. Like, I come in looking like the Michelin man, y'all. Like I, I come walking in the house like just loaded down with, with all this stuff. And, and, and then I have, as I come into the house, I have the pride of the Kool-Aid man celebrating my success as I triumphantly enter the house. Oh, yeah! right? It's because I win, right? That's a, okay, maybe I need therapy, but, but, uh, 
So, so please understand that when Brandy tried to tell me that I needed to unpack those boxes, like she might as well have been saying, hey, Will, listen, you need to, you need to start taking bubble baths with scented candles, um, listening to Celine Dion while watching Lifetime movies on Sunday afternoon instead of watching football. And I'm like, baby girl, that ain't going to happen. right? That's not going to happen. Why? Because I got this. I am a man. Plus, um, I didn't want to do the extra work of having to unpack it and then repack it and retape it and all that kind of stuff. And so... So here I am, here I am four years uh, later uh, with these boxes. And listen, because, because I refused, because I refused to deal with this, this, this old stuff uh, the right way four years ago, here I am getting hurt by it all over again. Like here I am getting hurt by it all, all over again. In fact, that, that afternoon, Braylon... Um, we picked her up from school, and she wanted me to hit, like, ground balls to her um, out of the softball field. And I was like, my, I came up with a better excuse. I didn't tell her. But my, my, I was like, my back, like, my back was hurting, y'all. I was blew up. And so, so we're like, oh, we, we got other things we got to do. And, and so here I am not able, listen, I'm not able to live in, in complete freedom today because I have past hurt that still hurts. I have past hurt that still hurts. See, you know, you know that our soul is, is, is like that too. Like our soul, it, it's like that too. You, you ever notice that, 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 that how you, you can be having the greatest day in the world and then all of a sudden that, that certain song comes on? And, and, it, and it just takes you back. It takes you back to, to, to a painful place. You ever notice how um, you, you may be having a perfect day and then all of a sudden somebody uh, says somebody's name? And then all of a sudden, it just, it just ruins your day. Or all of a sudden, maybe you're just hanging out on the social and, 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 and you're on Facebook and, and a certain, you know, certain somebody who you already blocked, like on yours, but, 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 but they commented on like a mutual friend's post or something and you just simply see the name. And, and all of those not so pleasant emotions just kind of start rushing back to you. You ever experienced that? Anybody else? Or is it just me? Okay, so, so, so listen, here's what I want us to understand. Here's what I want us to understand today is that th this is the blinking red light on your dashboard telling you that you have some past hurt that you've not fully dealt with. It's, it's telling you you've got some past hurt that you've not fully dealt, for, uh, dealt with and therefore your past hurt still hurts. And so the last, last two weeks, um, I've shared this verse with you guys and I want to I wanna go back there again to kind of set us up for where we're going um, today, uh, last couple weeks, we've looked at Ephesians 4, um, and we've gone to verse 26, and, and verse 26 says this. It says, in your anger, do not sin. In your anger, do not sin. Now, now two weeks ago um, in this series, we talked about anger. And so if you're dealing with anger, and you, you missed that Sunday, I encourage you to go back and, and, and watch that from a couple weeks ago. But we, we talked about anger, and listen, uh, we talked about how anger in and of itself, anger is not a sin. Right? Anger is not a sin. It says right here, in your anger, do not sin. So therefore, anger is not a sin, but, but, but if we don't deal with it in a healthy way, it can turn into sin. Right? And so, so the word says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And then we get to this part right here in verse 27 that I want to kind of camp out on for a minute. It says, says and do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a foothold. Listen, church, listen. In, in these blinking lights that are popping up on our dashboard in these moments, these, these things are telling us, they're telling you that you have some past hurt that you have not dealt with in a biblical way. And because of that, you are giving the enemy a foothold in your life to rob pieces of the Holy Spirit fulfilled life. And listen, listen, if that's the case, listen, then the abundant life um, has missing pieces. If the abundant life has missing pieces, pieces um, in your life, then listen, it is not fulfilled. Right? He came to give you life and give it to the fullest, but, but if it's got missing pieces, then, then, then it's not fulfilled. We're not living the fulfilled life, and so we got to deal with it. So we, we live in a fallen world, and, and we're constantly surrounded by and interacting with people that are hurt. We're dealing constantly with hurt people. And here's what I know to be true about hurt people. Here's a fact for you. It's not a very fun fact, but it's a fact. It is that hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. Now, now here, here's the danger. What happens is, is, is someone does something that, that makes us sad. 
Well, this is where it starts. But it does something that, that makes us sad. And, and we don't deal with it. We don't deal with it because we, we, we don't like dealing with, with conflict and we don't like confrontation. And so we just kind of leave it be. But, but what can happen, what can happen is that, that, that our sadness then turns to hurt. And then our hurt turns to anger. And then our anger turns to bitterness. And, and, and if it's left unchecked, then what happens is our bitterness turns into a hardened heart. So, so what started as sadness or, or maybe, maybe just hurt has now become a foothold where the enemy, the enemy sets up base camp in our lives and it becomes a landmine and it manifests itself in our life like, like really all the time. You start thinking about like, like any time that, that you're overly tired or overly stressed or overly frustrated or even hangry. Right? Then, then all of a sudden, what happens? Boom! You just explode on, on the people, on the people that you love the most. Why? Why? Because I have allowed, I have allowed this right here to stay present in my life and to rob me of life and to harden my heart. And so, so Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 4, 26, Paul says to not give the enemy a foothold in our life. And then I'm so thankful that just a few verses later, um, in verse 31, he explains how. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that today, uh, right now in Ephesians 4. Let's go to verse 31. This is what Paul says. He says, get rid of all bitterness. What, what about that bitterness that is so, like, well-deserved? Or, or, or that they aren't. I mean, you, like in other words, you have every right in the world to be bitter. I understand that's true. You got every right in the world. In the world is the key phrase. We don't have that right in the kingdom. We don't have that right as, as Christ's followers. Right? To, this is what Paul says, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Somebody say, get rid of it. Look at your neighbor say, get rid of it. Now look at the other neighbor that you didn't look at the first time and say, sorry, I didn't look at you. For, please don't be bitter. In fact, you can't be because the word says get rid of it. So, so let's keep going. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, slander along with every form of malice. Here we go. Verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another. I just, I wish that it would have stopped there. I do. I, I would like my flesh wishes that this verse would have stopped there. But it didn't. This is what, what God's word says to us. Let's keep going. It says, forgiving each other. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. We need to be forgiving each other just, just as in Christ God forgave us. So, so church, listen, according, according to the Apostle Paul, how, how do we eliminate the enemy's ability to take up residency in our lives? How do we do that? We do that through forgiveness. We, we do that through forgiveness. Now, now forgiveness. And what a, what, what, a, what a beautiful word when we think about how it applies to our lives, Right? Like, I love, yes, give me some of that. Like, I need some forgiveness in my life. I, I love, I love, it's a beautiful word. It's a beautiful word when I think about how it applies to my life. But man, it is a tough word when we think about having to apply it in our lives. That's a whole nother story. It, especially, especially if and when the other party won't accept responsibility. Right? So, so today, I, I want us to walk through a, a forgiveness process. Okay, I want to walk through a forgiveness process for some of us that, 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 that are dealing uh, with this. There, there are some things, listen, there's some things that are going to happen um, in life, and, and somebody comes up and will say, hey, please forgive me, and you're like, man, hey, we're good. Like, like I, honestly, it didn't even re really phase me. I've had people apologize to me and be like, I had no idea. Um, and honestly, it doesn't really impact me that much. So we're good, man. We're good. No problem. Thank you for apologizing. Or I might even say, you know, you really didn't have to. That didn't, that didn't hurt. I didn't even take it that way. Or, 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 and we're, we're all good. And so there's times that it's like that. But listen, there, there, there are other times that there is an offense or there is trauma that cuts so very deep and in those cases like I believe sometimes finding healing is a process 
Okay? Finding healing is a process. It, it, it's kind of like, like our body. Like if you think about it as if I went out in the garage and I'm picking stuff up and there was rusty, sharp stuff all over the fact We ended up with, you know, scrapes and all those things that you would think anytime you're cleaning out a garage with, with all the junk. But, but, but if, if I go into my garage and, and, and see my body, my, my body um, um, heals from different wounds differently. So, so if I go out and, and I'm picking something up and I gash my arm um, open, well, what are they going to do? Like, what are they going to do? They're, they're, I'm going to go to urgent care maybe, and then they're going to they're clean it, right? They're going to give me a shot, um, and then what are they going to do? They're going to close it, right? They're going to close it with stitches, but, but if, if, if I severely were to burn that same arm, Right? If I severely burn um, that same arm, they, they would not simply close it up. In fact, in fact, they would open it up because a severe burn has to heal from the inside out one layer at a time. Right? And so, so this morning, my, my prayer is that we would begin to allow the Holy Spirit to, to heal those of us that have been deeply wounded from the inside out. From the inside out. So, so, so if you're ready, somebody say ready. Now, I know this is not, like I said, this is hard, y'all. Like, this is hard. We're about to dive in to this forgiveness process, and this is hard. This is hard. This is hard, okay? And some of you are not going to like me today, okay? And that, that's okay. That, that's okay. I love you anyway. And so, but, but this is hard, but it is worth it, okay? It is hard, it's gonna, but it's worth it, and I'm, I'm going to show you that um, today. So, so we're getting ready to dive in. Here we go, number one. Number one, church, we've got to acknowledge the hurt. We gotta acknowledge. We've gotta acknowledge it. We we gotta acknowledge the hurt. And, you, you, and listen, I, I want to just pause right here and say you you may need professional help with this. You may need the professional help. Like like I had to acknowledge. I had to acknowledge that I had some severely broken pieces in my life that was destroying my life. It was destroying my life. It was destroying my marriage. It was destroying my family. And, 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 and if I did not go to counseling, if I did not go and get professional help, y'all, my, 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 my family would be ruined. My marriage would be ruined. My life would be ruined. And I don't believe, I, I don't believe I'd be standing. I know I wouldn't be standing here today. I don't even know that I would be on earth today. Like, because I was struggling. I was struggling in shame and in condemnation. And, 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 and I, I, I wasn't acknowledging some of the things that had occurred to me in my past that, that were triggers and that were deep-seated roots that I hadn't dealt with. And I needed to deal with it. And so, listen, when I say you may need professional help, listen, by the way, we all need counseling. <laughs> we all have broken pieces. Like, I'm just saying, you may need counseling right now. We all need counseling. And if you, don't think you're above it. Like we, we, all, we all need some help, but some of us, some of us need it now to be able to help us um, with this step. Listen, a, a, a natural human preservation response when we're hurt at times is to try to pretend that either something didn't happen or we try to minimize the impact that it had on our lives. So I was listening um, to, to another pastor talk about battling um, severe anxiety. And he's talked about how it got so bad, it got so bad that, that he had to check himself into an inpatient facility. And, and honestly, his pride was humiliated. He's like, man, I'm a pastor. Am I really got to go like, and check myself into a rehab facility like, to deal with this? But it, things had gotten so bad. And by the way, again, <laughs> again, so, like none of us are above ever needing help. None of us are ever above needing help. Just because you may have a specific calling on your life doesn't mean that sometimes you got those broken pieces will resurface and you are going to need some help. And so he sat down with a, a licensed counselor um, who had also been a, a pastor himself for years and began to describe all of his anxiety. And, and the counselor was listening uh, to everything that he had to say. And then after he was finished talking about the anxiety, the, 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 the counselor said to him, he says, okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of all your grievances. I want you to make a list of all your grievances. And this pastor was like, well, no. He's like, why? Why, why, why I got to do that? Like, like, like I, I, li listen, I, I don't want to do that. Like, like, I'm not here. I'm not here to talk about that. Like, I'm here to talk about anxiety. I'm not here, I'm not here to try to go back and, and live in the past. Like, like I, I don't want to deal with that. I want, I want to deal with this. I want to, I, want, I want to deal with this. And then the counselor, the counselor said to him, do you know how much anxiety-producing energy it takes to hang on to all that unforgiveness? Let's talk about who really hurt you. 
And we need to do that. Listen, not to, not to rehash old wounds. But we need to do that because, because until you acknowledge it, and until you face it, and true, until you truly feel it, like until, until you acknowledge it, you can't forgive it. So while you're still pretending like it didn't happen, and you're still pretending like it didn't hurt, and you're still pretending, and here's one, here's one for you. We're pretending like, like, like you're too strong as an adult to let something that happened to you way back in your childhood still affect you. And in fact, the enemy's just whispering to you, be, I'll get over you. It's ridiculous. Like, you should let me seriously, that happened when you were five. Like, well, so we're still pretending, we're still pretending that it doesn't affect you. you. You remain bound by it because you can't forgive what you don't acknowledge. You can't forgive what you don't acknowledge. I, I say it like this um, all the time here at church. God can't heal what you don't reveal. And I know that to be true for two reasons. Number one, it's true because his word says so. Number two, it's true because it rhymes. But you can't forgive what you don't acknowledge. Somebody may think, well, but Pastor, Pastor, well, listen, listen, I mean, time heals all wounds, though. I mean, time, time heals all wounds. Listen, false. False. Time allows him to become even more deeply rooted and entrenched in your lives the longer that we hang on to them and don't surrender them to the healing power of Jesus. Time just makes it even more rooted. Y'all remember Joseph? By the way, it's, it's okay if you don't, because I'm going to talk about him in just a little bit. Um, but, but Joseph, if, if anybody had a reason to hold some unforgiveness, it was Joseph. Right? In the Old Testament, uh, uh, Joseph, back in Genesis, uh, the, the, the ones who were supposed to protect him, like his older brothers, they abused him and they sold him into slavery. That's what happened. If you don't know the story, they, 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 his, his brothers were jealous because his relationship with dad and dad loved him. And so, so, he, he, so, so they abused him and sold him into slavery. And then, and then they, they, he went on to spend years in slavery and in prison while, while the brothers went home and told dad that he died. And so if anybody had a reason to be a little bit bitter, um, it, it was Joseph. Like, like what, a, what an absolutely terrible situation. Like, like if, if that happened to me, listen, I, I, obviously I'd be mad at my brothers. Like, I'd be, about, I'd be mad at my dad. Like, like, and and I, I would definitely, I'd like to say I'm more spiritual than this, but I would definitely be mad at God. I would. I'd be mad at God I, and, 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 and for letting it happen. I mean, even God didn't do it, but he let it happen. And so, so, so I'd be like, God, why, why, did, why did you let this happen to me? Like, 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 I'm serving you. I'm doing the best I can. Like, why, why did you let this happen to me? Why, God? Why did you let it happen? By the way, by the way, listen. Did, did you know that God is not intimidated by your questions? He's not. He's not intimidated by your questions. Like, like, it is okay to ask hard questions. It's okay to ask hard questions and sometimes simply just be like, God, I don't get it. Why? It's okay. God is not, he's not intimidated by your questions. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 18, 3, he says, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Now, some of you are thinking, how's that verse apply? Well, well, church, if you've ever had kids, then you know they question everything. Like, everything. Dad, why does the moon look like that? Well, well because it's, it's, uh, it's reflecting the... By the way, I taught history. <laughs> uh, it's, ref <laughs> it's reflecting the, the, the sun in the back to the earth. Well, um, well, why, why is it so bright tonight? Well, because it's a, it's a full moon. Well, why? Well, because the, the earth isn't... Um, got the earth, and then there's the sun, and, and then, and then the, the moon, and so there's no shadow. And, and but, Okay, but why? Well, why, why is that? Well, well, because God made it that way. Go to your room. Like, I, you know, shut it, kid. <laughs> like, like uh, you right? All the parents in the house said, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah. But listen, God, God is not intimidated by your questions. In fact, listen, I would argue that, that, that asking him questions is a good thing if you're willing to listen for his answer. And by the way, he will answer. Amen, girlfriend. Testify. 
So, so Joseph had, had these absolutely terrible things happen to him, but what he thought was his prison, God was actually using as his pl platform to, to elevate him to his position in the kingdom. If you know the rest of the story, listen, even though, even though he was a slave and a prisoner, God, God worked the miraculous in his circumstances to, to elevate him to the second most powerful man in Egypt. He's a slave. <laughs> but God was working behind the scenes. And so here we are now years later, and, and there's a famine um, everywhere in order to survive. Everybody's uh, got to come to the palace for food. And, and Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge of the groceries. Like he, he's in charge of the food. And so now his brothers, the ones who sold him into slavery, have to come beg him for food. Now, I want to show you real quick as this happens in Genesis 42. Uh, it tells us this. tells us in verse 8. tells us that Joseph, as the brothers came, Joseph recognized his brothers, but the brothers didn't recognize him. They didn't, they didn't, recognize, they didn't, they didn't recognize him. He didn't look like a slave no more. I know that's not proper English, but sometimes I speak gangster. Okay, so but but, but they, they, he didn't look like a slave anymore. So so now 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 Joseph is he's kind of a big deal. Like he has many leather bound books, and his office smells of rich mahogany. And he he was he 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 has arrived. Is what I'm saying. Like like he he's a big deal. Like he he's a big deal. Like 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 it has a big deal. Has a big deal. Surely surely being like a man this man that's like in control of things and like running things. Like surely he can handle those things that happened to him in his past. Like, I mean, surely he's got to be over it. Like, like, like he doesn't need to face it. Like, he's, he's good. <laughs> I mean, he's basically royalty at this point, right? We're, we're about to see Joseph enter into the forgiveness process because we're about to see that he's been holding on to it for all these years. Let me show you. One, one, of, his, one of his brothers is begging um, for mercy, and we're going to go to Genesis uh, 45, uh, 1 and 2. It says this, then, then Joseph could no longer control himself before all of his attendants, and he, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. Here it is. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. And all his Pharaoh's house heard about like Like he is, this isn't like just a little, <laughs> I mean, he is letting it out. Boo-hoo, snot bubbles, ugly face, crying. To where everybody around there hears what's going on. See, what happened is Joseph finally acknowledged it. And, and when he did, when he did, he, he listened, he was, given, he was given the revelation that even though it was excruciatingly painful and even though it was wrong what they did, God still used it for his good and for the good of the kingdom. And I know that because the, the next verse, verse 4, look at what it says. It says, then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into slavery. And now, don't be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling, for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there's, there's been a famine in the land and, and the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. That's Genesis 45. See, and then we can, we can fast forward and we can look into, into Genesis 50 and this is where the bumper sticker or the coffee mug verse or the, the, the kitchen magnet that some of us have, uh, this, is, this is where it comes from that many people quote that, 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 that verse in verse 20 where it's like what, what you meant for harm, God meant for good. Right, because of this place, what you meant, what you meant to destroy me, what you meant to harm me, like God intended it all for my good. From the very beginning, like you was trying to wreck me, but from the very beginning, God, God was intending it for my good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many. Like, please understand, church, here's the thing. In order to get to this revelation in Genesis chapter 50, he had to acknowledge the pain in Genesis 45. He had to acknowledge it. He had to acknowledge it. Why? Because we can't forgive what we don't acknowledge. 
We can't forgive what we don't acknowledge. Number one, number one, acknowledge the hurt. Number two, number two, we have to surrender to grace. We got to surrender. We got to surrender to grace. Listen, listen. Everything we are, everything we are, we are because of God's grace. Everything. Everything we are is, is because of God's grace. Uh, uh, Ephesians 2 8. Ephesians 2 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. We are saved by grace. Somebody say amen. Where is that now? 1 Corinthians 15, 10, one of my favorite verses. For, uh, but, but by the grace of God, this is Paul talking, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me, it was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was within me. See, we receive all that we are by grace. We receive our identity by grace. Our new identity. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, we are now called to speak by grace. We're not called to speak by grace. Go to Titus 2.11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us. Grace continues to teach us. To be our teacher. Now I'm going to tell you, I want to warn you, you're not going to like this. And it's okay, it's okay to, I mean, you're going to have some things, when I say this, you're going to have some things flare up. But surrendering to grace means we forfeit our right to punish. This is hard. This is hard. If we're going to surrender to grace, it means we forfeit our right to punish. See, we, we see this all the time in marriage when somebody screws up. Like I've talked to people and it'd be like, oh, I, I, I mean, I, I forgive them. <laughs> but I'm still going to make them pay. And maybe, 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 maybe you don't flat out say, I've heard somebody say that before, but, but, I, but maybe you don't say that out loud, but, but you live it. What, 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 what do I mean? Like, you're going to remind them what they did. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show up constantly like i mean in the easiest of conversation husband may be like well honey i'm i'm kind of craving mexican food and and she's like well well i'm i, I want italian and the husband's like well italian honey that doesn't really sound good in fact i had um i had a i had that at lunch they they brought in italian at the office um today and so so i mean i i don't really i don't really want italian if maybe we could think about it. and and she comes back well 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 i kind of wanted a spouse that would remain faithful but we don't always get what we want now do we Right, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive. I'm gonna forgive, but, but, I mean, I'm still gonna hang on to it. It's still gonna come out when, whenever I start to, I'm gonna explain why that happens in a minute. But look at, look at, look at Romans 12, 17. It says this: Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Here it is: If it is possible, as far as it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. So, so here, here's what happens. Right? You, you've forgiven, but, but your flesh wants to hang on. And listen, it, it's a natural defense mechanism for your flesh to want to hang on to. If you've been severely hurt, with this is in your marriage, this is in any relationship, if you've been severely hurt, then, then your flesh, it's a natural defense mechanism uh, for you to want to hang on so, so that you can still feel some kind of control. Right? So what, what happens? Because when the hurt was inflicted, when the hurt was inflicted upon you, you realize that you had no control. It was out of your control. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen, right? So, so you realize it was out of your control. And so you, you realize it was completely outside your control. Now it is totally natural to try to hang on, hang on to past hurt and to try to hang on to, to, to this vengeance and, and try to hang on to it in an attempt to try to regain control. This is a completely natural response. But, but if we remember, if we remember um, control, <laughs> control is a fleshly desire. Again, it's a natural fleshly desire, but it's still a fleshly desire. And as we learned last week in Galatians 5.17, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh, they are in conflict with each other. 
So even though it is a natural fleshly desire, this is not the Spirit's desire for your life. See, the flesh wants control, but the Spirit wants freedom. Forgiveness, church, forgiveness is about freedom. Forgiveness is about freedom. Now let me tell you what it's not. Forgiveness is not justifying their actions. Forgiveness is not letting them off the hook. And forgiveness is not reconciliation. It's not. See, the, the spirit, the, the spirit wants the spirit wants freedom. And the only way to live in freedom, the only way to be set free, it, 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 to be released from it. We gotta be we gotta be willing to release it. We gotta be willing to release for a while because we've got to acknowledge it. First, we've got to acknowledge that it exists, and then, then we've got to be willing to surrender to grace and surrender my right to punish. I don't want to be controlled by this anymore. And, and, and listen, even though, even though. Even though because they hurt me, like I, I want to hang on to it, because just in case, because because I mean I can use I, I get to use this as a weapon now. I mean like if the, if they if they come and, and I, I I start to feel any kind of insecurity, any kind of hurt, like feel like it's gonna happen again or any of those things, like I can take them, like I can I just beat them with like. But as long as I'm hanging on to it, I can't be set free from it. So do you want this fake facade of control or do you want freedom? It's hard. This is hard stuff. Number one, number one, we got to acknowledge it. Number two, we got to surrender to grace, surrender your right to punish. Number three, like I said, this is hard. We talked, we, I talked about this a couple weeks ago. This is hard. But yeah, we got to pray for them. You got to pray for them. Number three, pray for them. Now, now we talked about this a couple weeks ago when when we were in week two of anger. But but I want to show you something that jumped off the page to me this week um, when when I was studying this. And by the way, just so that you're not mad at me, I mean you can be mad at me for a second, but I'm just going to tell you, um, it ain't my fault. Like I, I didn't I didn't choose I didn't choose to tell you. Like it is definitely not my natural response to be like pray for them. I, I'm a man of the cloth. Oh, 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 oh. No, that's no no. I, like I I, I want to get them too. And so. So, so it ain't my words. It, it, it's Jesus. Look, look at Matthew five uh, forty three. Is what Jesus says. You've heard. You've heard that it was said to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who persecute you. So Jesus has commanded us that we are to pray for those who hurt us. Now let me tell you what I realized about this passage this week. Now there's a couple things. Number one, again, this is Jesus talking, and Jesus tells us that we need to pray for those uh, uh, that, that 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 hurt us. And he, can, he says that we need to love them, but we also need to uh, pray for those um, who, who hurt us. Now number one, number one, um, Jesus modeled this. By the way, he still does. <laughs> um, <laughs> He still models this. Like, like, like he modeled this when, when he when he when he says he says forgive them. Literally on the cross, he says what he says forgive them for they know not what they do, right? I mean, literally nails in his hand. Like his face still has chunks of beard missing and is bleeding and has spit rolling down his brow from the people that just spit on him. And then he says forgive them for they know not what they do. So, so number one, Jesus modeled it. But here, here's the other thing that really jumped out at me again. Number two, th this is Jesus saying that we need to pray for them. Now, here's my question. My question is, why do we usually pray for people? Think about it. Like we normally, we normally pray for people because we're asking Jesus to do something for them, right? I mean, like, like people come to me and be like, hey, Will, will you pray for me for this? And they're asking me to ask him for them and, or to agree with them um, uh, uh, of what, what, what we're asking Jesus for. Um, but then, again, this is Jesus talking, though. And Jesus tells us, Jesus tells us that, that we, need to, we need to pray for him. Here's my point, okay? My point is this. Jesus doesn't need us to pray for them in order for him to intercede in their life. He's Jesus, right? 
his spirit is already knocking at their heart's door. Like, like literally, Scripture tells us that right now, right now, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And what's he doing? He's interceding for them. He's interceding for you. Jesus is praying. Like, that's what he's doing right now. So, so he, he doesn't, listen, he doesn't need us to pray for them in order for him to intercede in, in, in their life. He, he needs us to pray for them so that he can manifest healing in our lives. That's why. So you praying for them isn't even really for them. You praying for them is, is so that he can manifest healing in your lives. I'm almost there. We're getting ready to start to, to wrap this thing up, I promise. So, so, but let me, as we pray to kind of close this today, how, how, do, we, how do we do that? How, how do we do that? How do we, how do we pray for someone who caused us uh, so much pain? And I, I, shared, I shared this again in week two, and I, I know that there's some that kind of parallel here, and so I want to share it again. Um, this is just me. This is just what I do. I pray, I pray, um, and, and I've had to pray because I've had some terrible things happen in my life. Um, I had, uh, years ago, um, I was on, on staff at, at, at a church, I uh, was 22 years old, and, and my, my, I just discovered along with the deacon, another deacon, we were, I was the only person on staff at that church, and, and, I, and I found out with myself and a, at a deacon, we saw that our, our fifth and sixth grade Sunday school teachers were having an affair. And, 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 and so as the only staff person at all of 21, 22 years old, I got to be the one to since I was the only person on staff at that time to, to sit down and be like the voice of authority along with the chairman of the deacons and, and, and remove them um, from leadership. And I remember them leaving the church in front of all my students, like screaming at me and cussing at me, like as they walked out the door. And 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 because, I mean, they were caught, but they weren't ready. They weren't going to repent. And, and so it was just a terrible situation. And then my good buddy Rob, whose wife it was that, that was engaged in this affair, like, like, he was broken and 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 so helping try to help him work through that and and um it was just a terrible situation and then and then and then two months uh two months about a month and a half um go by um and they murder him they murder my friend and to say that that jacked me up is the understatement of the world like anger rage like like and we all knew it. We all knew it. And then they, 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 they fled um, out of the country. We didn't know at the time, but they, they were on the run. And they were on America's Most Wanted. This was on 2020 and Inside Edition and all the shows. And there's been three movies made about it now. They're, they were tagged the Sunday School Killers. It's a national story. And, and, and I, I lived it. I was the, and, and man, it, 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 it Jack me up and so when I say when I say listen I remember watching their trial and I just remember I'm just gonna be honest like praying like like, like hoping and praying Lord, Lord like get them like they deserve I mean they deserve like the worst of the worst like get them get them in fact in fact give them the death penalty I'll do it now, that's the kind of anger that I have like in my heart at this time and y'all it, it, like I was done I was done I was done with church I was done with ministry I was done with all these things I was going to serve for a few months until we got a pastor and then help him get and then I'm deuces I'm out and I'm not going back to church ever again that's where I was and if, if God hadn't crossed my path with when I was running if I hadn't come across a young lady named Brandy I probably would still be running but a whole other story, but God used, God used my wife, who didn't know Jesus at the time, to, to bring me back to Jesus. And so I realized, I realized as, as this was happening, this was something, this isn't just something that, that I, I read in a book. This is something that, I, that I, I lived, and this is something that I actually had to pray. And my prayer was, Holy Spirit, get them. Get them. But not in, not in a fleshly, vengeful way. It was Holy Spirit consumed their life so that they will repent. And in other times in my life, because they're on death row now, but in other times in my life when someone's hurt me, it's like, get them, get them, get them, get them, get them, get them, Holy Spirit, so they'll repent and they'll never ever hurt anybody else the way that they hurt me. Like change them from the inside out. Use, use my pain to be a platform in their life about how good you are and how, how you change them from the inside out. Use my pain 
to transform other people's lives. So listen, church, this is hard. Like, this is hard, but you've got to remember the alternative. Like, that if we don't, if we don't do the hard thing, what happens is, is the sadness turns to hurt, and the hurt turns to anger, and the anger turns to bitterness, and the bitterness turns to a hardened heart, and the hardened heart haunts us in every relationship that we care about for our entire lives. Jesus taught about the impact of a hardened heart when he explained the parable about the, the, sowing, the sowing of the seed. If you, if you remember that story, he's talking about how the, that good seed falls on a hardened heart. It's never going to grow. If, if good seed falls on a hard heart, nothing, nothing can grow. But, but if you do the hard thing and you commit to pray, and, and each time you pray, each time you pray, even though it's hard, each time you pray for them, what happens is it's going to chisel away at the hardness of the soil. Like literally every prayer, it's like chiseling away at a layer. And another layer as we pray, and a layer, and a layer, and a layer. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will start to transform your heart on the matter until one day the soil is now ready to receive new seed. And the Spirit of God can once again grow something beautiful in your life that used to be desolate. So we got to make the decision to be obedient to the command of Jesus and pray. Listen, it's a choice. It's a hard choice. In fact, it's an impossible choice to try to do it on your own strength. But, but if you make it, it will invite the presence of God to consume your pain. we got to acknowledge the hurt. We have to surrender to grace. Number three, we have to pray for them. And the last one, the last one here before we close, we have to release them. We got to release them. You got to release it. Go back and look at Romans 12, 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, let me be clear. Please hear me. Please hear me. Re refocus back in if you're floating right now. So listen. There are some relationships that the Holy Spirit absolutely is not calling you to rekindle. Please hear me. Forgiveness is not fellowship. Forgiveness is not fellowship. Now, forgiveness, that's my responsibility. Like, I've got to be willing to do that. But fellowship, that's our responsibility. Like, it takes two. The, 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 the fellowship is our responsibility. And in order for there, ever, uh, for there ever to be restoration of fellowship, there first and foremost must be absolute, true, Holy Spirit repentance and, and taking responsibility for what there's done. And then there's got to be obvious change and healing in that person's life, followed by them honoring and respecting where you are in the process. Okay? Listen. True repentance owns it. And I want to tell you this because some of you, some of you are dealing with, with someone that's perhaps a narcissist. And so what I want to tell you is that, that somebody is, that, that battles narcissism, that they will apologize to a true offense in an untruthful way. And so you need to have ears to hear that. There, there are people that will use the words, I'm sorry, but never apologize for anything. Saying things like, like I'm sorry that you interpreted my words that way. Like, I, I, I'm sorry that, that, that what I did made you feel that way. I'm, I'm, sorry, that, 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 I'm sorry that you hurt. Like, like, being completely disingenuous. Like, in, in, order, in order for there to ever be renewed fellowship, listen, there has to be heartfelt Holy Spirit repentance where, where the other person takes full responsibility for their actions and repents from those actions. Again, look at, look, look, don't believe me, look. Look at Romans 12, 18. Again, those first four words. He said, if it is possible, which means sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it's not possible. And in fact, sometimes it would actually be against the will of God to engage in fellowship. So some examples could be in cases of severe abuse or, or cases where, where the person is still... Uh, battling addiction and has not been healed um, from addiction or, or instances of, of mental health um, issues. This is why, by the way, this is why if you are ever going to consider reconciliation and fellowship, you always, always before even considering renewed fellowship, you always need to submit that decision to godly counsel. Always. Always. Because you, sometimes you can't see it when you're in it. You've got you to be willing to submit that decision to godly counsel. Hebrews 13, 17. I, I'm almost done. This is it. 
Hebrews 13 and 17, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you. See, church, you're not always called to renewed fellowship, but you are always called to forgive. And to do that, I believe you need to do these four things. Number one, you need to acknowledge it. Number two, you need to surrender to grace. Number three, you need to pray for them. And then number four, you need to release them. I want to ask you if you bow your heads with me for just a moment. And as, as we do every week, I just want to give you an opportunity just to pray and ask, Holy Spirit, what, what, what are you speaking to me today um, through, through this word, through this message? And church family, what, what I know to be true is that you can't lead people where you're not. And so we just walk through this process and we said, number four, you got to release them. And listen, you, you, you can't release them. Some of us in this room, you can't release them because you yourself have never been released. You yourself have never um, experienced number two. You've never surrendered to grace. And so that's my first question for us this morning. Again, you can't lead people where you're not. And so if we're, if we're called to, to acknowledge it, but then to surrender to grace, you have to first have experienced grace. So my question this morning is, have you surrendered to the grace of God? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? And speaking from experience, I, I just remember, I just remember going on this faith journey and, and knowing that, man, I knew, I knew when I laid my head on the pillow at night that I was missing something. And so I tried to, to clean myself up from the outside in. I, I tried to start acting right and doing things right. And I started going to church and started trying to seek. And, and I just for six months, I was so frustrated because I saw everybody else what, what appeared as if other people in the church living in freedom, but, but I didn't have, I knew I didn't have the freedom. I knew when I still, every night when I laid my head on the pillow at night, there was this void that I didn't have uh, that was in my heart and so it, it took six months until finally I, I had either somebody said it in a way that I could understand but I had ears to hear that that what I was missing was Jesus I hadn't surrendered my life to Jesus I had invited Jesus to take my life I hadn't surrendered to his grace and his mercy and allowed him to be the Lord of my life and so on July 13th, 1995 at 12.07 a.m., that's exactly what I did. I just said, Jesus, you are Lord of this. Take this. I need you to heal this. I want to trade my failing report for your perfect report. And God, that I, I'm so riddled in sin and struggle, Lord, I, I can't do anything. So I surrender to you and I gave my life to Jesus. My question for you today is, is that what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do? Do you need to surrender your life to Jesus? And if that's you, I want to be able to help you um, this morning. So, so, so if that's you, not, I'm not going to embarrass you, not going to call you out, but, but if that's you, I just want to invite you right where you are just to lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Be awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Awesome. I said, Jesus, I need you. I need, I need your grace. I need your mercy. Praise God. Awesome. Gotcha for the six or seven hands that we just saw go up. Listen, listen, that. I want you to know that God's word is true and God's word says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. If we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, meaning we're gonna surrender our lives to Jesus. By the way, that the word also says in 1 Corinthians that no one can say that unless the Holy Spirit leads them. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless the Holy Spirit leads them. And so you wouldn't even be able to lift your hand like you just did if Holy Spirit wasn't speaking to you. So, that, I mean, that's the awesome news is that those of you that lifted your hand, you're hearing the Holy Spirit this morning. He is calling you to his grace and mercy. And so we're going to, we, we do this every week here at One Church. We're going to confess that truth, all of us out loud together that Jesus is Lord. We're going to declare that truth. Jesus is Lord out loud on the count of three. All of us together. Jesus is Lord. One, two, and three. Jesus is Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. And we praise you for new life, God. We praise you that, that for every person that confesses that Jesus is Lord today, that's invited you into their life, God, that at 12, 17 a.m., they were a sinner saved by grace, but that's not who they are anymore. God, that, that you have transformed them. Your word says that, that we are a brand new creation, out with the old, in with the new, and we praise you for new life.
that every promise of your word is true for them. If you made that decision this morning, I want to encourage you as as you, as you leave here today, uh, there's a, a QR code out on a, a table that says next steps. You can just take your phone and, and, and turn on the camera and hold it up and a link will pop up. Click that video. There's a video of myself just kind of explaining a little bit uh, about what that decision looks like. If you've got young kids, it's an awesome um, um, video also to share the gospel and kind of show in a way that they'll understand um, that as well to be able to help you and give you next steps um, in just in your walk with Jesus. There, Before we leave, here today that there's a second group that I want to talk to and I want to invite our our prayer team our ministry team if you guys would come forward I just want to remind you that we talked about this forgiveness process and this is a process that you are not called to walk alone you're not called to go through this by yourself we, we all need biblical community. We need biblical community to help provide godly counsel. Again, because when we're in it, sometimes, sometimes we can't see the obvious of what Holy Spirit's saying. And so, so, so we need that. And so um, this morning, right where you are, I just want to give you an opportunity. Once again, if we'd bow our heads, because again, I just want this to be between you and Holy Spirit. This is, this is a private moment between you and him. But if you know, if you know that there is some unforgiveness in your heart that Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying it's time to release, it's time to do the hard thing, then I just want to invite you right where you are, just, just to hold your hands right out in front of you, palms in the air, like I'm going to come up and I'm going to toss you a ball and you're just going to catch it. Um, this is a, I, nothing magical about this position. This is just, uh, I love this uh, position because this is a position of, of catching or receiving something, but it's also, it's also the posture of releasing um, something. And so right where you are right now, if you, need, if you need the Holy Spirit to invade in your situation and empower you to do the hard thing, just want to invite you right where you're at, just to hold your hands out in front of you. And right now, we just pray, Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you to have your way in our lives. We invite you, Lord, to, uh, we, we release this pain, God. We release this person. We release this circumstance um, to you, God. And we just pray that your grace will flood in, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will fill us from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, God. The, the void that's been in our heart because we've been holding on to this thing, may, may you consume that void with your presence, God. You'll never leave us empty. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we submit to it. God, help us to acknowledge it. And if we need, if we need to go to godly counseling, Lord, just light, light our wick to where we know, God, that, that's our next step. And God, we'll, 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 we'll reach out. We'll reach out to the church. We'd love to get you hooked up and, and give you some counselors that we would recommend if that's a step that you need to do to help you acknowledge it because we can't forgive what we don't acknowledge it. But God, help us to surrender to your grace. Help us to have enough grace to, to be able to get to that place to pray for them. God, to chisel away at, the, at, at that hard area in our life so that you can, you can replant your good seed and that life can flow from it. Help us to release them so that we ourselves can be released. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, let's put our hands together for what the Holy Spirit's done this morning. Amen, amen. I want to remind you, if you signed up for Plugged In, that's after uh, next service. would love to have you come back if you've already signed up for that. Next week, uh, we've got our praise giving. If you, it's not too late to sign up for baptisms um, or baby dedications. would love to, to celebrate that with you. This Wednesday night, activities for all ages, 630. Uh, come be a part of us and get plugged into fellowship. Amen. Let's stand up before we leave. Lord, we're thankful that the Cowboys play on Monday night so we can have a glorious remaining Sunday in Jesus' name. Everybody's head. Amen. Have a blessed week, guys.